Greetings radio people, welcome back to the shack. This is part three of building a Bitex. In this video we're going to look at the balance modulator, product detector and the BFO and the audio stages. I've drawn the schematic for the BFO and the balance modulator. Nothing very exciting here except to note there's a tri-filler wound inductor and the capacitor on the bottom left is a trimmer. These are the audio circuits. I've only built the mic amp so far. That's the circuit build of my BFO. That's what the output looks like. This is what my mic amp looks like and this is the output and the input so you can see there's quite a lot of gain there and now this image that I'm showing you now is this is the test setup so we've got the mic amp, the balance modulator and the BFO all hooked up together. So I've got a one kilohertz audio signal going into the microphone amplifier. The output of the mic amp is going into the balanced modulator. We've also got the BFO oscillator that we made running and that's going into the balance modulator and then the spectrum analyzer that you're looking at is coupled up to the output of the balance modulator it's just the other side of the small attenuator you'll see in the circuit diagram now there's some quite interesting things going on here so the purple trace that you can see on the spectrum analyzer the peak in the center this is our BFO frequency so this is effectively our carrier this peak here is our carrier minus the audio frequency, so this is one kilohertz down in frequency. This here is the audio frequency plus the carrier, or the carrier plus the audio frequency, so this is one kilohertz up in frequency. So what we've basically got here is a carrier and two sidebands. This is the lower sideband, this is the upper sideband. So this is an AM transmission. This is exactly what an AM signal looks like. So there's two adjustments we need to make now. The first thing we need to do is to get rid of the carrier because we don't want the carrier in a single sideband transmission. And the potentiometer, the preset pot that's in the balance modulator is there to null out the carrier. I've got it all the way to one side at the moment to emphasize the carrier bleed through. Now, what I should be able to do, and I can't quite get right here, is I should be able to adjust the pot that I'm doing now and you'll see the carrier is dropping, 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 dropping but I would have expected to be able to get that almost into the noise but that's the lowest I can so I might need to try some different diodes or have a think about the, the preset. Now mine isn't a uh, multi-turn preset, I hadn't got one and I think that would help immensely. The other thing we need to do now and what I've done to try and illustrate this, the yellow trace that you can see on the spectrum analyzer screen is a sweep of our crystal filter. So what we want to do now is because this is a 40 meter radio we're trying to retain the lower sideband which is this peak here. So what we need to do is adjust our BFO frequency so that our lower sideband is inside the pass band of the filter and the upper sideband is suppressed by it. So basically when this signal passes through the bandpass filter, through the crystal filter, anything that's outside of that yellow line will become attenuated. Now I'm cheating with an extra capacitor at the moment, but if I remove that from my BFO oscillator, you'll see that's about the right adjustment because now we've got the audio peak that we want the lower sideband right in the center of the filter. The carrier is suppressed. I think it should be suppressed more. I need to look at that. But the upper sideband is being suppressed by the crystal filter. If I were to change the audio frequency to be one and a half kilohertz, for example, do you see the difference between the carrier and the lower sideband is now one and a half kilohertz? But the other important thing is that the upper sideband is now very, very much down the skirt of the crystal filter, which is exactly where we want it to be. So I'm going to go and build the audio amplifier now because I very much expect the receiver to be working. Italia, 
So here I'm just injecting one kilohertz audio tone into the mic socket. I've got one of my rigs in the room tuned to the frequency and listening to the transmit signal. That's just about it for part three. That's the rig pretty much finished. We need to do the PA, tidy up the balance modulator and the carrier suppression. And I certainly need some screened audio cable on my audio stages, but uh, the radio is basically working. The receiver's working well. You need to remember that there's no AGC or any of the other advanced stuff that you get on a modern rig. This is a very basic QRP homebrew piece of kit. If you like what I'm doing, please subscribe and join the community.